Hi, my name is Dibbo, and I'm presenting Octo, an open source generalist robot policy. This is a collaboration with folks from Berkeley, Stanford, CMU, and Google. I'd especially like to mention Homer, Carl, Kevin, and Oyer, the other co-leads of this project. The big lesson in machine learning is that big models trained on large data sets just perform better. They generalize well, they're robust, and they can adjust a new task quickly. And the same story seems to be coming to robotics, where instead of training narrow policies on single robots in single scenes, there's a promise of using large, diverse datasets to improve the generalizability of robotic policies. This is, of course, easier said than done. Robotic data is very diverse across different types of task specification, different types of robot sensors, different numbers of cameras, different action spaces, and in general, figuring out how to share information and knowledge across robots and tasks that look so different from one another is a very difficult problem. So I'd like to tell you about Octo, our open source generalist robot policy, how we trained it, how you can use it, and some lessons we learned along the way. The core idea in Octo is to take all of these diverse robot data sets and turn them into a sequence of tokens to train a transformer on. Simple and vogue. Tasks and observations get converted via a small input adapter into sequences of tokens. These get processed by a transformer, and the embeddings of the transformer are decoded into robotic actions by a small action head. In designing the Octo model, we discovered a few important principles. The first is that large robotic datasets are very diverse, and capturing multimodality of actions is a really big deal. We found diffusion-based policies to work best compared to discrete tokenization or MSC-based imitation methods. The second important lesson is to let the transformer do the visual processing. Instead of using a large ResNet, we used a small ConfNet and instead delegated the majority of visual processing to the transformer itself, where it could attend to the task, different camera angles, and previous time steps when encoding visual features. Now, fine-tuning the Octa model is also relatively simple. For new observation and action spaces, we simply need to just change the input and output adapters and fine-tune the model. Since the majority of parameters are in the transformer, which remains shared, much more of the pre-training knowledge is kept. OK, let's talk about the data used to train Octo. We use the OpenX Embodiment dataset, which is a large collection of robotic data collected by academic labs around the world. We used a subset that had 800,000 episodes on 11 different robot embodiments, the largest training set for a robotic policy so far. Now, using this data has its challenges. The first is that loading terabytes of data in a model training pipeline is very difficult infrastructurally. We designed a lot of tooling to make it easy for new people to come and pre-train their own models on this kind of data. The second issue is fundamental. Not all the data in OpenX embodiment is actually good. We had to carefully manually curate the data, removing and downweighting subsets that had bad image resolutions, niche tasks, or excessive repetition. This led to the Octo Mix, which is a collection of 800,000 episodes that outperforms prior dataset mixes used and leads to positive transfer. Now, Octo can be used in two main ways. First, it can be used to control robots that it saw in pre-training straight out of the box. In this zero-shot framework, we found that Octo outperformed RT1x, the previous state of the art in generalist robot policies. It works better in particular in unseen scenes and when there are distractor objects. We found it even competitive with RT2x, which is a giant VLM with 500 times more parameters than Octo. Octo also has good model scaling, improving in performance as the number of parameters increases. But the important thing that I want to mention is the flexibility. Prior models are rigid, allowing for only a single camera view and language specification only while Octo allows for full flexibility, goal images, language, third-person views, risk camera views, any combination of the above. Now, the more typical way to use the Octo model is to fine-tune it on your own robot using a small demonstration data set. It's easy to add new sensors, cameras, and action spaces. Just swap out the input and output adapters and go. In our own experiments, we found that Octo fine-tunes relatively well, outperforming policies that were trained from scratch, and those that used pre-trained visual features. These fine-tuning experiments required adapting to new observation and action spaces. We've tried to make it as easy as possible for you to get started with Octo and fine-tune it for your own tasks. 
If you're interested, please check out our paper, website, or our code.